Hi, my name is Sean Olson. I'm going to walk you through installing Wallworm. First, you'll need to get Wallworm. Open up your web browser and go to wallworm.com. Once you're there, you should find a link that says Wallworm Model Tools, or if this ever changes, you'll find a link to Wallworm Model Tools, Wallworm Pro, or the plugin and script store. I'm going to click the Wallworm Model Tools. This brings us to Wallworm Pro which is the commercial version. There's also a free version you can get with this Wallworm free. If you click that and go to the downloads, you'll find Wallworm model tools here. For this video, I'm going to install Wallworm Pro. So if I go to downloads, we don't have Wallworm Pro to download here, just documents. That's because you either need to buy it or if you've already bought it, you need to log in. To buy it, you add the cart and do the checkout. If you've already bought it, you can go to your My Account page. I'm going to log in, and you can log in with a username and password or with Facebook or Google+. I'm going to log directly with Google+. Once you're in here, you can always get your latest downloads with this downloads link, and any of the products you own should be listed here, and in this you'll see Wallworm Pro. I can click this download link. I'm going to click that and save this to my desktop. Next, I'm going to go back to my account page. We need to click this link that says Wallworm Pro License Keys. This is where all of your license keys will be kept. I'm going to keep this page up because we're going to need it in a minute. I'm going to minimize this window. Now we're back to the desktop. I'm going to find the zip file that I downloaded. Again, I put this on my desktop. I'm going to right click it and go to Properties. In this window that pops up, You'll see this checkbox in Windows 10 or in older versions of Windows it might be a button that says unblock. We have to click that option and hit OK. We need to do this before we extract the contents. Once we've done that we can double click the file and it'll open up a window explorer uh, window here with all of the contents of that zip file in here. You'll see a folder named wallworm.com, changelog, readme, and wallworm pro. You can open up these to get more information. Next I'm going to do this, I'm going to open up another window and I'm going to browse to wherever I have 3ds Max installed. In this case Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Max 2018 which is where I'm installing this. Scroll down to the Scripts folder and from here we can drag the wallworm.com folder over to the Scripts folder and let go. You'll probably be prompted for permission because this is a protected Windows directory, program file directory. Hit continue and allow it to copy. Once it's done, the wallworm.com folder will be inside of your scripts folder. Now we can close these folders. Now we need to launch Max. Now for the first time you launch Wallworm Pro after installing, you need to launch it as administrator. So we're going to right click and choose run as administrator. When this happens you're going to see this pop up and say do you really want to do this? Click yes. Now you only have to do this the first time when you run the install function. Now that Max is launched we click the scripting run script button and we'll be in the scripts folder by default usually and we'll open the wallworm.com folder and there's a file here called install.ms need to double click that. There's the user terms. You'll need to accept those by clicking this accept button checkbox. Once you've done that, click the agree to terms and install. It'll pop up saying you need to restart Max for access to any new plugins. Click OK. And now it's going to say that Wallworm Pro is installed. And again prompt you that you'll have to restart. Now before we restart, let's activate Wallworm Pro. Wallworm Pro is currently not active, as you can see here in the settings header. So we're going to go back to our web page where our Wallworm Pro license was found, and I'm going to select my license key and copy that. I'm going to then, I then paste it into the enter license key and hit validate license. It'll take a moment, and then once it's confirmed, It'll say your license is now validated and you can continue. You can close this and now Wallworm is officially installed. 
But before we continue, we'll do a couple things. We're going to set some paths and get some games into this configuration. So I'm going to import two different games. I'm going to browse for the bin folder of Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which you see in this path right here, and look for a file named gameconfig.txt. I'm going to double click that, and you'll see immediately it listed Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I'm actually going to do it for another game. I'm going to do Black Mesa. Browse there, and a gameconfig.txt, that's what we browse for again. Double click it, and you'll see I have Black Mesa and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, if I want to select and load the CSGO settings, I select it in this preset and hit Load Selected Preset. It'll take a minute here, and it will fill out all of the, pre all of the paths, and it will parse the entities so that we can use the entities from that specific game. It's important to note that all of the settings to the entire global settings are saved per preset. So if you make any change in the Models tab, for example, and save it to the CSGO preset by making a change and then hitting Save, if you go to another preset and load it, you'll see that the setting will revert to whatever that, uh, that game settings were set to. So it's important that if you make a change in one game and want that to be in all the others, you actually have to make that change in all of them. The presets are per game. So now that we've got these two games set up in here, I'm going to close these settings and close Max. And you should do this before you do anything else. You start designing, you should, after installing, close Max and then relaunch it. Now notice, this time I'm not running it as administrator. I'm just running 3ds Max as I normally would by double-clicking the icon. Now that Max is restarted, we should be able to do all the things that you can do with Wallworm. You can find all of the Wallworm functions under this Wallworm drop-down menu. There's the model tools. This sub-menu is generally for exporting models from your scene. The level design menu, this is generally for setting functions and working with levels, creating brushes and displacements, etc. Materials for creating 2D sky renders and exporting your materials and working with materials inside Max and sending to the game. Utilities are general purpose. Some of them that you should learn for, one of these in particular you should learn about is check for problems. If you click that, you have a UI that lets you find issues with your current scene and Max settings. Importers, where you import MDL files, SMDs, VMFs, and other files. Exporters, where you send your assets from the scene to the game and various other things including different communities on the internet with Wallworm. Also, once you have Wallworm installed, you'll notice that if you go to the Create tab of the Command Panel, choose Geometry from the Types, and change the category to Wallworm, you'll find that there are some objects down here. Now, with Wallworm, you'll find Source Model and Skywriter, and these other plugins are ones you can get from Wallworm.com. Source Model, if you click it, will allow you to load models directly into the scene. So if I click this load, mo load model from MDL, I can then just browse and find any of the models that are in my scene here, like Alex, where I can see things about her, such as different LODs, her collision hall, and uh, different things like that and this tool is being actively developed and you'll see more updates in the future. Finally, I want to show you one more section and that's a standard thing in Max is the customized user interface. The reason I want to show you this is because some of the functions in Wallworm are not exposed to the UI but you can create menus and buttons for them. So in this case, I'm going to create a keyboard shortcut to show the dimensions of objects. So I'm on the keyboard tab, on the category I'm going to choose wallworm.com and let me maximize this so I can see better. Here's one that says display selected objects dimensions. I'm going to select that 
and then I'm going to create a sh keyboard shortcut to that. In this case, I'm just going to assign it to Shift O. So I hit Shift O, and it says that it's currently not assigned to anything. I'm going to hit Assign. And when I close this, if I hit Shift O, you'll see that I have the dimensions of uh, this selected object, and it works on anything that's selected. So this is a way to see the dimensions of things. Uh, and there are a lot of other functions directly in Wallworm that you can expose to keyboard shortcuts. You just go to Customize User Interface and then choose whether you want to use keyboard binding, if you want to add these to toolbar, toolbars, menus, or quads. And then you always choose wallworm.com from the category. And then you choose the function that you want to run. Some of these are things that replicate functions in Hammer and some of these are just other enhancements in general that are part of Wallworm. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. Thank you, and have a good day.